Hey, what's up? This is Doug with Design 8 Studio, and if you're using the new Jackpot controller board from V1 Engineering, I can show you a great simple way to use the web UI of the Jackpot controller board to perfectly tram your Lowrider version 3, mostly printed CNC, with your table. Now by tram, I'm referring to the gantry, which on most lowriders is the x-axis, being perfectly parallel to the surface of the table. Now, I have my x and y switched, but for purposes of this demonstration, I'll refer to the gantry as x because that's how most lowriders are. I'm using a tiny touch plate, and Ryan sells a great tiny touch plate on the V1 Engineering web shop for a very great price. Mine just happens to be homemade out of a stainless steel ruler. I do have a printables listing. I'll put in the description a link for that to this little beauty. It's a 3D printed plastic two-piece thing that allows me to take the electrode wire portion of my tiny touch plate setup, connect it to a magnet so that I can just reach under and just magnetically click it onto the collet nut and that allows the electrical signal to pass through the collet nut and down through the bit so that it will make contact with the tiny touch plate. Now, the idea for this process of getting the gantry trimmed to the table, which is to say parallel with the table, a couple of things to mention about that. One is that by design, the Lowrider 3 has a shot. It has a chance of actually being parallel just right out of the gate but it can be off ever so slightly, uh, one side higher than the other. And there is in Marlin, for those of you running the uh, Marlin-based Big Tree Tech controller boards, there is an M666 command that adjusts the pull-off on either the Z1 or the Z2. That same command can also be used for the X and Y axis. But for jackpot boards, which are based on Fluid in C, which is based on GRBL, or at least it's GRBL compatible. For jackpot boards, uh, there is a, an attribute of each axis uh, referred to as pull-off. And that allows you, you can change the pull-off setting for one of the Z steppers, slightly different from the other one, to compensate for anything that's out of perfect tram. And the concept is that we're going to take, uh, we're going to connect to the Fluid in C with Wi-Fi. And then when we load into the web user interface, we're going to first home the Z-axis um, while we're located um, at a set distance away from X minimum. And then we'll probe down then raise the Z all the way up, probe down again. We'll do that four times. Then we'll move across to the other side of the gantry and repeat the same thing. So we're taking four measurements on an X-min side of the gantry and four measurements on an X-max side of the gantry. Now, I'm doing my measurements having moved all the way to the edge and then come back from the edge by 100 millimeters. And then I do the same thing on the other end. I go all the way to the edge and move back by 100 millimeters. So I'm already positioned in X and Y where I want to be. And so I will simply home the Z. And then once I home the Z, just to kind of make sure that everything is going to be easy to read, I'll go ahead and clear out the history of uh, the feedback down in the commands area. And now I'm going to use my probe script. I'll, put a, I'll actually put this probe script in the description. And so I've tapped the edit macro and I've created a probe macro button. And that's what you see here. So I'm going to hit probe. And you'll see the camera is mounted to the gantry, so you're seeing the table come up to the gantry as opposed to seeing the gantry move down to the table. It's an Einstein kind of reference. Uh, my probe is set up to touch off twice, once at a slightly higher speed and then again at a slower speed. And now when I go down to the feedback in the commands section, you'll see PRB, 
and a first value, that's when it went down fast, but then you'll see a second probe value, and that negative 88.505, that second one was the more accurate one done slower. So I'll record that on a piece of paper, negative 88.505. So here we go, I'm 100 millimeters in from X minimum, my first sampling of the data is negative 88.505. And now I will simply clear out the command's uh, feedback history, go back, and I'll tap the screen button to home the Z again. And now that Z is homed again, I will once again probe. Now a slow, more accurate second touch off. And again, when I scroll down to the commands feedback section, we'll see the first probe setting, a first probe result, then the second probe result. And this time it's negative 88.550. Negative 88.550. So I'll write that down, clear this out. home up to Z max again. And probe for our third sampling. Scroll down to the feedback section. There's our first probe, and there's our second one at negative 88.550. And there we can see that my second sampling and my third sampling were exactly the same. And finally, I'll clear that out and <clears throat> home the Z again. And now we'll take our fourth and final sampling on the X-Men side of the gantry. And again, we'll go to the feedback section. There's our first probe result. Here's our second one, 88.575. So there you see my sampling results from four different probing operations on the X minimum side of the gantry, 88.5 on all of them. And once we get to the hundredths place and the thousandths place, we see a little variation, 05, 50, 50, and 75. I've also already done this on the X max side of the gantry. And again, it was negative 87 on all four of them, negative 87.8 on all four of them. And once we got to the hundredths place and the thousandths place, we saw a slight difference, 10, 30, 05, and 15. So I'm going to go to an Excel spreadsheet, punch these numbers in and average them, and then uh, do a subtraction of uh, the lesser from the greater and see which side, which stepper needs to have its pull-off adjusted. And that pull-off is set in the config.yaml file. So let's head to the computer and see what kind of change we need to make. Okay, so you can see on my screen here, I've got a copy of Microsoft Excel open and I've inputted my Z1 stepper sample data four different times of homing and then probing. And that is on what most of you would call the X minimum side of your gantry. And then I in inserted the four samples from homing and probing on the X max side of the gantry. And then I did a sum of each of them and subtracted the lesser from the greater coming up with a difference of 0 0.73. So then I just used the normal default four millimeter pull off and subtracted the 0 0.73 from it 
and got 3.27. And so uh, because my Z1 was slightly higher, I want my Z2 to pull off not, not quite as much. So I'm wanting the Z2 stepper pull off to go down from four millimeters down to only 3.27. So I go to Visual Studio Code and I go down to the Z steppers and you'll see motor zero is my Z1 and it's got a pull off in millimeters of 4.000. Motor one is my Z2 and I've edited its pull off to 3.27. Then I just need to make sure that my jackpot is turned on, that my low rider is switched on, and make sure that I connect my Wi-Fi to Fluid NC, and then go to 192.168.0.1, and go to the Fluid NC tab, and there I can click on Manage Local Files, and go to Upload, go to my newly saved config.yaml file, that has my new reduced pull-off amount for my Z2 stepper. Click open and it uploads it. You can verify the file size shown here with the file size shown in your Explorer on your computer to make sure that it's the correct file. But at this point, basically all I need to do is restart the fluid in C or re, re, in other words, re, restart the jackpot or reboot the lowrider to get it to operate from the new config.yaml file. So this means that based on a careful sampling, uh, I figured out exactly how much I needed to move the homing pull-off on one side to get my gantry as trimmed as possible, uh, given our inability to measure perfectly, but trimmed as close to perfect as possible in being parallel with my table and we that we've got accomplished next up will be actually checking the table for square and this very same trick applies here in that uh, once I measure my diagonals and find out which way one of the Y steppers needs to home a little bit differently have a little bit less or more pull off on it I'll be able to come right back in here and edit the config.yaml file to change the amount of pull-off on the, for me, it would be my X1 or X2, but for you, it would be your Y1 or Y2 if you've built your lowrider in a standard configuration. But this same uh, GRBL or fluid NC variable called pull-off in millimeters is the very same thing you would edit to get your low rider where it is squared up and so we'll not do that in this video to keep things short but the very same process that i've shown you would work for that so i'm now trimmed next up is squaring and then i'll be ready to get cutting with my jackpot this has been doug with design 8 studio and if you enjoy our content please click like and consider subscribing and as always until the next video i wish you happy making